I've been experimenting with some ideas for the control unit recently, and I'm pretty sure with some major recent discoveries and inventions, I can definitely do it much simpler now than ever before. Now this time, uh, the control unit is only going to have six opcodes available to pick from, and with these simple six instructions, it should be able to do anything it ever needs to. Now, uh, one of the instructions is actually just a call to the uh, the ALU and passing a four-bit argument onto it for its operation, because the ALU has its own instruction set, which doesn't need to be integrated into the control unit. And so, the control unit then delegates some of the load to the ALU, uh, simplifying everything. And the funniest part is two of the instructions for the the control unit now are going to be are only going to be for subroutines. And so, if you remove that capability, which isn't even entirely necessary, you only have four instructions which can fit in a two-bit integer. <laughs> now, the instructions are the null instruction, which is to do nothing, which is uh, if that is eliminated, it could be all the way down to three. Uh, another one is the conditional jump, which could be used as an unconditional jump if done correctly. Uh, we also have, uh, as I said, the uh, the ALU uh, call. And thirdly, we have, uh, uh, what do we have again? Oh yeah, now uh, writing the contents of the accumulator to any address. And these addresses are completely arbitrary. They could be the address of a register, or an I.O. port, or any modular component at all, really. And of course, the clock signal here is supposed to reach to every component in the entire processor. And uh, that's all there is for right now. I'm going to do some more work and see if there's anything else I can uh, show then. So far, the progress is slow, but one of the primary changes is this sequencer here. On every third clock cycle, it executes uh, what was put in by the first two clock cycles. Uh, this is the program counter, which reaches out to an address in general memory. Uh, these are the two registers for uh, opcode and uh, argument. Uh, this is the instruction decoder for the first half here. The second half is used for directly addressing memory. Uh, there is no uh, functionality for constants outside of what's already in memory, which is fine, actually. It works about the same. Uh, what else? Now, this was the hardest part to get right. <laughs> it, it was a complete and utter nightmare. Now, uh, other than that, not much has changed, actually. So I'm pretty sure I have everything figured out now. The conditional branching is working perfectly fine, along with the unconditional branching, which is actually the same command, but with di different arguments. <laughs> uh, so far, uh, the ALU control is functioning. The writing to memory should be functioning as well. Uh, the only two things I haven't done yet is the subroutine related things, and I've decided to postpone those for later, and so this is the uh, the finished for now control unit uh, model three. It's the third attempt, and uh, this is still the hardest part to get right. Uh, I'm probably going to be testing how this works soon now. So far, this is the layout of the processor with a RAM reset and a control unit reset. There's a few glaring holes in this design that I'm just now noticing. 
Now, uh, for one, the control unit runs automatically and has no on-off switch, so there's no way to control it uh, manually, which is stupid. Now, uh, also, the conditional jump instruction, I'm pretty sure, doesn't work the way it's supposed to. But other than that, this is looking pretty good. So, I've done some testing, and it appears to be functioning mostly correctly. So, the call to the ALU seems to be functioning very well. If I were to turn on the simulation, this uh, instruction here would be played out. Putting this value into the accumulator of the ALU, and this is the instruction for the ALU setting the accumulator to the specified address and memory, and this is the declaration of that address, which in this case is this address here. And so watch this. And as you can see, it functioned exactly as uh, according to plan. Strange things happening, though. Oh, I think I see why now. <laughs> oh, this is pretty bad. A control unit malfunction. The ALU is being called every clock cycle. And every time it does that, it executes uh, the null instruction, which is to set the accumulator. And since every address specified is the first address, which is set to 30, it set the accumulator to 30. <laughs> oh, I'm going to need to fix that somehow. So, very good news. I've done a lot of good progress, and this is almost complete. So I installed an on-off switch. Uh, full reset for the control unit. I've made sure that everything is functioning correctly. I put in displays for flags, the accumulator, the current address, and uh, the instruction going to the ALU right now, as well as a clear for uh, the entire uh, RAM. And so, uh, well, in this case it's more like registers, but whatever. Uh, as a demonstration, allow me to show you the program that I wrote in order to demonstrate its functions. This program starts by adding 25 to the accumulator, and then seven, uh, 77, but these are hexadecimal values. And then there's a null instruction, and then after that there's a jump instruction that jumps it back to the beginning of the program. And so this program will just continue uh, flicking between uh, the first value in the accumulator, which is hexadecimal 25, and the second value, which is hexadecimal 77. 25, uh, in my memory, is actually in decimal 37, and 77 is, well, 16 times 7. Uh, plus 7, so whatever that is. But that's besides the point. Now right here I have an unconditional jump and uh, the ALU functioning entirely as anticipated. So now I just need to do things like testing uh, conditional jumps, and then once I do that, everything should be uh, complete, I think. So I've completed development on the conditional branching, and take a look. I have it running at 16 hertz. So, uh, in the program, it initializes the accumulator to the value 16, and then counts down to zero, and then once it hits zero, it resets the whole program. And it's using these two uh, constants here that are written into these two slots, and it's referring to them from here and here. 
here it's subtracting one each time, and here it's uh, setting to 10 or 16 each time. Now this here is the conditional jump. If uh, it's saying if zero, jump to uh, address zero, which is this one here. And so this is the non-conditional jump that jumps to address two, which is here. And jumps should only be used when jumping to uh, even addresses, because otherwise you'll be reading addresses as opcodes and vice versa, which is not ideal. Now here are the flags here being displayed. Now each time it hits zero, this flag turns on and this one turns off. Or I think this one turns off, doesn't it? Yeah. And so everything is functioning exactly as planned. And you can see the control unit reset is functioning as well. And so this is perfect, the perfect foundation for other projects.